Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. After a successful series against the Cleveland Indians tonight, the Twins open up a three-game series against the next team ahead of them in the American League Central. We will never forget the events of 11 years ago. Baseball will never forget where we all were 11 years ago on 9-11-2001. Welcome to Target Field. Dick and Burt with you for the opening game of this Kansas City series. When Pedro Florimon was called up weeks ago by the Twins, they knew he was a solid defensive player. The question was, would he be able to hit up here? So far, so good. We had quite a night last night. But Florimone, who actually started at double-A this year, New Britain, moved up to triple-A and now at the major league level. Couple hits in last night's ball game, A triple, later scored, and then knocked in a run with a double. So Florimone having quite a night, not only offensively and right here with a wild pitch, he scores the run. Defensively, we saw some very good defensive plays last night. Ben Revere made a great diving catch. Flormone himself going deep into the hole and getting it out, and then the barehanded play. Then later in the ball game, it was Lexi Casilla. I mean, Alexi Casilla making a great play. So, hey, you win a ball game, you have to say good pitching, but also great defense. The Royals were hosting the All-Star game in 2012. They knew that. They were hoping that they would contend for a division championship this year. Because of a very poor start, that didn't happen. But undaunted, the Royals have been one of the American League's best lately. Uh, you know, one thing about the Royals, they have a lot of young, talented players. It, they can hit. They're third in the American League average-wise. Yes, they played very well since August 1st. It's the pitching that has improved. And that's one thing that the Royals hope, that the pitching continues throwing strikes and getting deep in the ballgame, especially the starters, of course. One thing that hasn't changed, the Twins have dominated the Royals again this year. They've already won the season series. They'll open up the final series when we come back.
local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. Twins kicking off a new three-game set against the Kansas City Royals. All three games can be watched right here on Fox Sports North at Target Field. I'm Robbie Spikowski. Thanks for tuning in. Well, if you look on your calendar, you'll see it's Tuesday night. But for us at Fox Sports North, it's Twitter Tuesday. And today's guest was pitcher Cole DeVries. And fans, you can send in your questions via Twitter. Use the hashtag AskATwin when sending your questions. And today, we got one from Tom Graves asking Cole DeVries, what's been the one thing you've learned the most since you were called up from the minor leagues? you can compete on this level and I, I think I think that's the biggest thing is every time you get called up you know there's always that kind of iffy mentality where you're saying you know do I really belong here can I compete with these guys because so many guys you know I've been watching on TV for the last five ten years you know and now I'm playing against them and so it's kind of that that little bit uh self-consciousness that you have to you have to get over and so I, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned and Cole DeVries has done a very nice job of that in his rookie season. We appreciate all your questions and keep sending them using the hashtag AskAQuin uh, every Tuesday here on Fox Sports North. When we come back, it's Scott Diamond with first pitch with Dick and Burt. years ago and uh, nowhere has that uh, reflection been more somber than in New York itself at ground zero the memorial today remembering uh, the nearly 3,000 Americans who lost their lives on that day and like the American spirit itself the flag that flew atop the World Trade Center still intact today despite the ter uh, terrible uh, attacks of 11 years ago. Our thoughts and prayers again go out to everyone. And so uh, with all that as a backdrop to this game Scott Diamond will make the start for the Twins against the Kansas City Royals and Ned Yost who has seen his team rebound after a terrible uh, July to put together a pretty good August and September. Here's the Menards batting order for Kansas City Lorenzo Kane, Elcides Escobar Alex Gordon Billy Butler Salvador Perez. Mike Mustakas, Jeff Francoeur, Eric Hosmer, and Johnny Giovatella. 
And that lineup facing Scott Diamond for the third time this year. For Scott Diamond, he's making his 23rd start, looking for win number 12. Very good 3.35 earned run average. You can see the walks, only 23 walks for Scott Diamond in 143 innings pitch. 77 strikeouts, so makes him put the ball in play. Works very quickly. Northland for defense for the Twins. Josh Willingham back in left field. Ben Revere in center. Darren Mastroani in right. Eduardo Escobar at third base. Pedro Floramon, Jamie Carroll up the middle. Morno at first. Ryan Doman catching. Joe Maurer was in the original starting lineup. He was scratched with back spasm, uh, spasms, and uh, one thing led to another. Doman was in a catcher. Plouffe moved to the DH spot, and Escobar got a chance at third base. Twins will uh, hopefully uh, extend a winning streak and win this series. They have tied now the Indians for fourth place in the American League Central, the third place Royals ahead of them, and we're underway. Up and away, ball one. Sanford Health injury report taking a couple of regulars out of the lineup. Chris Parmalee day to day, and now Joe Maurer was in the original lineup. Was ready to take some batting practice tonight, and then he uh, came out of the game. That's a fair ball down the line. Lorenzo Kane will start the game with an extra base hit. A sharp grounder right over the third base bag. Yeah, just hugging the line right there. Third base umpire Larry Vanover was almost straddling the line. He watched that ball go right over the bag. And Kane leads this ball game off with his eighth double. That'll bring up Elcides Escobar. Royals did have a terrible month of August. They or uh, July rather, seven and nineteen uh, before and after the pause for the All Star break, which was in Kansas City. Then they rebounded nicely, went seventeen and eleven in August, and so far in September are four and ten, or four and six, I should say. Pitches up, ball one. Well, it's been a week between starts for Scott Diamond, so you might see him, like last start, be a little bit on the wild side in the first couple innings until he settles down. Scott Diamond normally pitching on three or, or excuse me, four or five days rest, pushed back because of the six-man rotation that the Twins are finishing the season with. Both starting pitchers. Are going through that. Will Smith, uh, Diamond's counterpart, young left hander, hasn't pitched since he pitched against the Twins mm -hmm. in Kansas City a week and a half ago. Yeah, no starter, especially like Diamond, wants to wait that long between starts, but they're trying to watch his innings pitched as the season winds down. Coming into the ball game, 142 innings at this level, the major league level, but remember, he started in Triple A where he threw about 35 innings. Yeah, it all adds up to 177 so far for Diamond. Bunted in the air and Diamond with the catch. One down. So Escobar with a terrible bunt. One away. Well, you're asked to bunt. Those are the little things that really can turn a game around by not doing what you're asked to do. Escobar, who has set eight sacrifices on the year. Had a pitch to bunt and just lay it on the ground as he squares around. But you can see kind of jabbed at the ball, created a little pop up. And Escobar, I'm sure, pretty upset that he did not advance Kane to third. One down. Here's Alex Gordon. Swing and a miss. Gordon's had pretty good success against Diamond. Four hits, seven at bats. But Gordon's a good hitter. He got off to a slow start. They moved him into the leadoff spot. They've slid him now down to third. He is fourth in the league in hits. And the guy hitting behind him, Billy Butler, is fifth in hits. So it's a good hitting yes. ball club. Kansas City can swing the bat. Pull to the right side. Morno has it. And Diamond gets to the bag before Gordon. Two down and on the play, Kane moves to third. And that will bring up Billy Butler. And that is where the sacrifice bunt not laid down. Kane would have been at third. He may have been able to score on that as 
Morneau had to go to his right to field that ball. If the Twins bring the infield in, which they probably would not have hurt here in the first inning, you know, that might be a base hit, too, if the infield is in. Here's Billy Butler, the designated hitter. Runner at third, two away. This is nice block by Domit. This is Diamond's third start against Kansas City this year. He is one and one against Kansas City. This guy can just flat out hit. Billy Butler uses the whole field. Three home runs against the Twins. He hasn't homered though in 22 games. He's stuck on 99 career home runs. Butler, the designated hitter for the Royals, a young man that's only 26 years old, but when he does play, he's first base. But they have pretty good first baseman. Sharp ground ball. Carroll handles it to Morno, and the leadoff doubles wasted. At the helm, sending out this Menards batting order. Ben Revere leading off. Jamie Carroll batting second. Then Josh Willingham, Justin Morneau, Ryan Doman, Trevor Blue, Darren Mastroani, Eduardo Escobar, and Pedro Floromone. And Will, that lineup will be facing Will Smith, the left-hander, making his 13th Major League start and his third career start against the Twins. He's 0-2 against the Twins in two starts, both of them in Kansas City. So making his Target field debut. Will Smith, 23 years old, fastball, big curveball, changeup, and a slider. And again, he has not started, hasn't pitched at all since September 1st, so he'll be going through all the awkwardness, whatever you want to call it. Scott Diamond uh, would be going through here tonight. Will Smith is going through even more of it. Ball one. Revere, Carroll, and Willingham here in the Twins' first inning. And a strike called one and one. Yeah, Will Smith started game one in that doubleheader. Remember Friday night, he got rained out. Twins played a Saturday doubleheader. He started game one, pitched well into the seventh inning, left down three to one. Cole DeVries pitched an outstanding ball game, got the win. Will Smith lost that ball game, gave up three runs in six plus innings. One and two to Ben Revere. The batting average has bubbled up over the 300 mark again. Off the glove, over to Giavatella, and it'll be an infield hit for Revere. So Smith tried to glove it, deflected it instead, and Revere's aboard. Yeah, Giavatella trying to. 
flip that ball, you have no chance to get Ben Revere. The only way is to try to throw it as quick as you can. He comes in, then tried to backhand it right off the glove of Smith, deflected over towards second, and then the little flip, no chance. Ben Revere way too quick. Twins third in the league in stolen bases, and Revere a big part of that. But Will Smith, according to manager Ron Gardner hire has done a nice job holding runners Salvador Perez the Kansas City catcher has been outstanding in throwing to the bases either on stolen base attempts or picking off runners Perez missed the first couple months of the year but he leads major league catchers with four pickoffs yeah, he's one of these young pitcher or catchers that like to show off his arm and he's a good one Seven stolen bases and eight attempts against Smith. He's had seven double plays turned behind him. Two and zero to Carroll. You saw the first time he kind of did the slide step toward home plate. That time he lifted up his right knee and held it just for a second. And of course, left-handers, if you can do that, like an Andy Pettit, just kind of come set, hesitate just a second. A good base runner is tough to, to get a good jump. Slide step down the line and foul by about three feet. I was always surprised that more left handers wouldn't do what Mitch Williams, the relief pitcher for the Rangers and others, would do. Williams was good at holding on runners. He bent his knee and he brought his knee behind the rubber, but his foot never went behind the rubber, so it was a legal move. But if you're at first base, you couldn't get a good jump because it looked like his foot was behind the rubber. A lot what Andy Pettit has been able to do too over his career when when he's healthy. Two and one, Carroll. And it's a base hit. Carroll missed an opposite field hit by a few feet, and he pulls one down the left field line for the second single of the inning. Well, one thing about Jamie Carroll hitting over 300 since the All-Star break, so that average continuing to climb. Northland four defense for the Royals. Alex Gordon won a gold glove in left last year. Kane in center, Frank Kluwer in right, leading the world in the assists. Mustakas, Escobar, Giavatella, Hosmer, and Perez surrounding Will Smith. Josh Willingham back in left field after uh, spending most of the last week as a designated hitter. Willingham career high 33 home runs career high 102 RBIs. Second and Revere gets back. Willingham has not homered in September yet. One of the strengths of his season is he spread his home runs around through the first five months but it could be uh, could be assured that his hamstring injury has Affected his swing to the point where he's yet to hit a home run. Strike one. His last home run coming here on August 30th against the Mariners. I think what we saw this year too, Dick, when he hit, does hit a home run, all of a sudden they'll come like right. you know, three, four in a row, maybe in a week's time. Foul back to strikes. Smith and uh, the middle infield keeping a close eye on Ben Revere. Of course, the scouting report is hey, Ben Revere will steal third. Twins will double steal. Both these clubs like to run. Twins with 118 stolen bases, the Royals with 116. Third strike, breaking pitch over the inside corner. Well, Smith picking up a big strikeout, his 44th strikeout in 68 innings pitch. Let's take a look at the GMC keys to the game. Both these ball clubs having a very good September with multi run innings. Kansas City and the Orioles the best 14 innings that they have had multi runs in an inning and the twins 13 times. 
Here's Morno. Breaking pitch, and he might have cracked his bat, pulling it foul, one strike. Opponents coming in at a ball game, hitting 299 off of Will Smith. Again, making just his 13th major league start. Left-handed hitters are hitting 321. Right-handers 289. He has given up 10 home runs, only two to left-handed hitters. One strike to Morno. Royals had a good chance to score the first run of the game, but didn't. Now the Twins have a great chance. Second throw to second base. And that's what Ron Gardner was saying that uh, Smith, for a young pitcher, inexperienced at this level, pays attention to runners, tries to keep them close. Outside, one and one. Watch the shortstop Escobar. Of course, with Morneau up, he, the shift is on. He's kind of right behind Ben Rivera at second base. He'll kind of hold that glove near his chest area. But when that glove opens up as Smith turns around, there you go. Go ahead and throw. That means throw toward home plate. Infielders, if a play is on and they feel that you can turn and throw and maybe get them. What they'll do is they'll open up that glove, the daylight play, pretty much. But not much daylight between Rivera and Escobar right now. He's pretty much standing behind him. One and two to Morno. Same pitch. Morno didn't go fishing this time. Two and two. First time around, Will Smith in his third major league start faced the Twins in Kansas City. Worked four and two thirds innings, gave up seven earned runs to the Twins, and then a last time out in that first game of the double hitter pitched a lot better. In that first game, he gave up three home runs, one of them to Morna, another home run to Ploof, and another one to Willingham. Two and two. That's the 3 1 loss. Runners go. And the throw goes to second. And Carroll is thrown out. So Perez throws out Carroll as the Twins again try the double steal. Two away. Always harder for that trail runner to take off. And that's why catchers, especially like Perez, the great arm, they're going to throw behind the potential stolen bases right here. Carroll right there got a pretty good jump, but a great throw by Perez and Escobar, the shortstop covering for the second out. Full count to Morno, Doman on deck. No stolen base for Revere. He reaches on a fielder's choice. There's a call, third strike, and Smith pitches out of a first inning jam. We're scoreless after one.
Between the Twins and the Royals, I'm Robbie and Smikowski. Well, at the top of the first inning, Dick and Bird alluded to this about Scott Diamond and his routine the last couple starts since he was suspended in his last start at Texas. And in particular, we look at the days of rest that Scott Diamond has had between his last three starts, three different numbers, four, seven, and six. And Ron Gardenhire in his pregame meeting with the media said that's a big reason why Scott Diamond has been a little bit inconsistent in his last three starts. He's been on a regular routine going into the game at Texas, Dick and Bird. And the one thing he hopes now, now that they're with a six-man rotation right now, he just wants to see Diamond on a consistent pattern, consistent days of rest, which hopefully leads to more consistent pitching from him on the mound. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, thank you. You know what that means a lot of times when you have that extra day or two, it means that instead of one bullpen, you may have two bullpens just to try to wear your arm down so you're not too strong. Perez with a drive to center field, backhanded by Revere. And it's a leadoff single. Royals couldn't do anything with a leadoff double in the first, and now Perez leads off the second with a single. Yeah, Salvador Perez, he's going to be fun to watch over the years for the Kansas City Royals. He's in his second season, but didn't play much last year. He started the season on a disabled list, had left knee surgery. This young man is going to be an exciting player. Mike Mustakas will hit next. Popped up foul and out of play. Mustakas put on a defensive clinic at third base in Kansas City a week and a half ago. And you see Perez now with a 15 game hitting streak, longest in Major League right now. Gets through Doman. Throw to second. Gets into center field. And now Perez to third base. Revere's throw. Not in time. Well, that was a mess. Ball went right between the catcher's legs, and then his throw skipped past Florimon. And so Perez is at third with nobody out. Well, right behind home plate in that backstop is that limestone. And watch this ball right here. Hits the limestone, comes back. Domit throws to second. It'll be a wild pitch. Charge to Diamond. And then the air by Domit. But it's not stopped right there. Gets into center field. So Perez scoots over to third. One and one the count to Mustakas. There's the limestone. And there's a wave at strike two. I think we did an instructional on that one time with a runner at third. If you could throw, say, a left handed hitter out, I mean, way out, throw it wild and hit that limestone, that third baseman would come running in, third base runner, and then we could get him out. See if the diamond tries that. <laughs> How about if he strikes out Mustakas, there needs to be a throw to first. A more conventional way would be uh, to get Mustakas, maybe get yeah, Frank Cooler to pop up. It would be more fun the other way. <laughs> Diamond, One down. That diamond picking up his first strikeout. That's his 78 strikeout at 144 innings pitched. And now Frank Coor. Frank Coor's numbers way down. Has had a disappointing last few months. Hoping to finish strongly in September. Twins bring the infield halfway in here. Not respecting Perez's leg speed too much here. They don't need to bring it in all the way they don't feel to keep him from trying to run home. Yeah, Frank Cora in his second season with the Royals last year hit 20 home runs, hit 285. His name was mentioned a lot just before the trading deadline of maybe uh, going somewhere else. So that was probably in his mind, but he's one of the veterans here in Kansas City. 28 years old, and he's one of the veterans. A lot of young, yeah. talented players. They've got a very talented outfielder, Will Myers, in the minor leagues. They chose not to call him up. Yeah, their Triple A team right now, Omaha, is in the finals for a Triple A championship. They're playing Reno. So a lot of uh, young players that maybe will they'll get a chance later September, but right now they're in the finals. Frank Coor drives in the first run of the game with a single to left. Frank Coor picking up his 38th RBI. Last year he had 87. You can see the frustration of Frank Coor going into this ball game, but he does pick up an RBI, and the Royals take the one nothing lead. And Diamond would tell you he didn't throw that pitch where he wanted to because it was right down the middle, and Frank Coor drove it hard in the left. 
Here's Hosmer. A little bit low, ball one. Hosmer looked like he was going to be a fixture in the middle of the Kansas City lineup after a, an impactful rookie year last year, but he's had a bit of a sophomore jinx. Two and zero. Oh. Yeah, I think that's the best way to defer, say it. A sophomore jinx last year hit 293, 19 home runs, drove in 78 runs. The numbers down this year. Two and zero. Oh. But this young man only 22 years old. That's to left, and Willingham catches it on a bounce. It's a base hit for Hosmer. I mentioned the Royals; they can swing the bat. Only the Rangers and the Angels have a higher team batting average. Always a dangerous play. Willingham coming in, trying to get it on that on the in the air, but gets it on that first top. So if he, had, if he had some hamstring problems, you know, he might feel it right there. Yeah. Three singles in the inning. The first run, Giavatella will hit. Now Diamond has been able to get 23 double plays turned behind him. That's what he needs right here. Ground ball. Up and away, ball one. Four hits. And the first eight at bats against Diamond. Javitelli in his second stint with the Royals this year started the season in Triple A. Fouled away. Diamond making his 23rd major league start here tonight. His 30th career major league start. His 12 major league wins, 11 losses. One and one. And a call strike one and two. The scouting report on Giavatella is just the opposite of what the scouting report has been on Pedro Floramon. Giavatella expected to be an offensive player. Their concern, the Kansas City Royals' concern, is whether he'll be able to field well at second base. Half swing, I think he went. Jerry Lane rings him up, two away. A big strikeout right there for Diamond, his second of the inning. And his second of the ball game. Went too far. Zoma with a nice block. Twins will be hosting their eighth annual sports internship and career fair at Target Field Thursday from noon to three. Last year, the fair hosted more than 20 sports related organizations and over 450 fair participants. Participants will have a chance to network and explore various career opportunities. As Kane takes ball one. For registration information and event details, visit twins www.twinsbaseball.com slash job opportunities or call 833 twins. Great opportunity for young baseball enthusiasts or sports enthusiasts to come and uh, look at the in internships that are available. 2 and 0 to Kane who spanked a double over the third base bag advanced to third base but that was it. Chopped to third and a foul ball. Tom Kelly made a point in the pregame show. And by the way, it's good to have Tom with us on the pre and post game show. And you don't want to get too wrapped up in September numbers because you've got many pitchers facing hitters called up from the minor leagues, hitters facing pitchers who might be up from the minor leagues. 
Kane lifts a fly ball to left. If Willingham can track it, he's lost it so far. Now it's back and over his head. Lost it in the twilight, and as we watch the ball go up from home plate, you knew it was going to be a problem. I lost it as soon as it went up, yep. and I'm, we're sitting up pretty high. Willingham no, had no idea where that ball was. It'll be a two-run triple for Kane. There's about a, a can't be more than 10 minutes, probably not more than five. But when twilight hits any ballpark, See, it's Josh, hard to track the ball. Josh has no idea. By the time he picked it up, he realized that ball's way over his head. I can't see it. He says. So it's a three-run second inning, and Kane already has a double and a triple in the first two innings. Escobar taps it foul. Anyway, Diamond did it for the Twins. May, June, July, and August. And so there'll be no mirages for him in September. But the Twins, that said, still want him to finish strongly. All right, he wants to finish strongly. You know, he's having an outstanding year 11 wins, six losses, very good earned run average. Not a chance to pitch over 200 innings combined at this level in AAA. One and one to Escobar. And now one and two. These two top hitters for the Royals, both coming from the Brewer organization. In the Zach Rinky trade. In his first full year with Milwaukee, Escobar hit 235. Last year with Kansas City, hit 254. And now with a good finish, Escobar can be a 300 hitter this year. He drives it to right. And Mastrani ends the inning. A lost fly ball leads to two of the three Kansas City runs in the second. A home run to right field. And the White Sox in a four game series after winning last night have the early lead in game two tonight. Yeah, this lot, this game, a lot more important to the uh, Detroit Tigers than the Chicago White Sox. They have to try to win tonight. Was Tigers it? come in three games behind the White Sox. Ryan Dolman will lead off the second for the twin. Will Smith now stake to a three run lead. Two strikes. Twin started the first inning with a pair of singles, but then a caught stealing and a couple of strikeouts extinguished the threat. 
Now Dolman, Plouffe, and Mastroani will hit here in the second. A little number up the line, and it'll stay foul. Well, in yesterday's ball game, Ryan Dolman hitting a home run, a solo home run in the eighth inning, his 16th of the season, and a career high for Dolman. He had 15 one year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Former team, the Pirates now have lost four straight, having a terrible last three weeks. Another tamper up the line foul. Here's the home run he hit to center. He is a big, strong man. Yeah, this off uh, right handed pitcher Frank Herman. Straight away center. Two strikes to Doman starting the twin second. Just off the plate, close pitch, one and two. Perez sitting away. Let's see what Fox Track yeah. says. A bit outside. And spunk back out of play. Still one and two. And a breaking pitch got him three strikeouts in a row. For Will Smith. I mentioned Smith, 23 years old. He came from the Angel organization back in 2010 for Alberto Cayasco, an infielder for the Angels. And the Royals like the Twins. They're looking for starting pitchers to go, you know, deep into the ball game and be consistent. Plouffe lifts it to right. Frank Coeur has an easy play for out number two. Gopher football with Jerry Kill is your home for Gopher football this week. Look back at the Gophers' big win and their home opener. See why Coach Kill was hanging with some students last week. And get a preview of the Gophers' upcoming test against Western Michigan. All this and more on Gopher football with Jerry Kill tomorrow at 6. Only on Fox Sports North. Two gone on the second. Here's Darren Mastroani. Strike at the knees. Mastroani getting the start in right field in place of Chris Parmalee. Tamper to short. Escobar hesitates and save it first. Escobar couldn't get a grip on the ball on the first try. And Masterani hustled his way to a hit. Uh, this guy, like guys like Ben Revere, Masterani, what they want to do is hit that ball, hopefully to the left or the right of a player, because they utilize that speed getting out of that box. Escobar getting a ball, you can see a little bit of hesitation, getting a good grip, and Masterani beats it out. And Masterani at first base, 19 stolen bases on the year and 21 attempts. Three singles for the Twins, two of them infield hits, and here's Eduardo Escobar. First ball swinging and a foul pop into the seats, one strike. Escobar, when he played for the White Sox, played a lot of third base. That was mainly because of the need the White Sox had, giving Euclid some time off. Played some over there when. Brent Morrell went out with an injury. They were pretty well set with Alexi Ramirez and Gordon Beckham up the middle, but for the Twins, we expect to see Escobar third, short, and second. Strike two. Escobar from Venezuela, 23 years old. Came over in the Liriano trade. Switch hitting infielder. That's hit a long way to left field. Gordon going back. And on the track makes the catch. Escobar. Hold one to the warning track for the third out.
thing you can vote for the Arby's value player of the game text the word value followed by a space and the player's name to short code two three four two three four got diamond reached for three runs in the second inning two of them on a two out lost fly ball that went for a triple yeah we haven't had said that too many times here at target field we say it a lot at the uh, the metrodome ball lost in the roof but not too many here Alex Gordon and of course Josh will be asked about it I think he lost it not in the lights but in the twilight of the oh, evening for here sure. yes up and in and it's one and one Gordon Butler and Perez here in the third inning for Kansas City you know one thing we have seen from Scott Diamond throughout his outings that he will have an inning where he'll throw 20 some pitches like last inning 24 but he has innings normally to get him deep into the ball game. he'll have 10 pitch innings 10 pitches thrown like the first inning 24 in a second and then all of a sudden he'll have the eight and the seven to get deep into the ball game. Driven to center and Revere to the track to the wall and it lands and Revere crashes into the fence. Gordon round second on his way to third and the throw. Not in time Revere just picking himself up now. It looked like he got. To the spot. But the ball hit on the warning track and then over his shoulder. Boy, uh, Gordon just showing off some power right there. That ball just kept going. High fastball. That ball just kept drifting behind Ben Revere. Masterani has to come all the way from right field and retrieve that ball, get it back in. So the second triple of the ball game for the Royals off of. Scott Diamond, the sixth hit already here with nobody out in the third. Infield halfway in, and a ball scalded to Carroll, who caught it right in the palm of his glove. Ouch! A hot liner, and Carroll didn't get it out the webbing. Looked like he got it right in the meat part of his hand. All right, I'm sure that's an old glove, but if you want to uh, break in your <laughs> glove, I think Jamie Jer Carroll just did. You heard the bat and then you heard the leather. Here's Perez, ball one. Twins again have the infield halfway in here. Perez singled up the middle, went to second on a wild pitch. Domit's throw skipped into center field past Florimon. So it was kind of a rotten way for the inning to start. He was standing in third with nobody out before the inning could be ended. The Royals had three runs. Good last pitch right there to Perez, getting in the kitchen a little bit. And we have seen Diamond Hill will work both sides of the plate. Good fastball inside, then the change up away. Lifted to left. Willingham back. Gordon will set up a tag. That's the fourth run with Gordon trotting in. Four to nothing, Kansas City. Yeah, not a bad pitch, but Perez and his power just hit it deep enough for the sacrifice fly for Perez. His 31st RBI of the year as Gordon scores. Base is empty, two out. Mike Mustakas, the batter. Strike. Again, Royals getting their third look at Diamond this year. Four early runs for them. The quality start stat can be misleading, but in Diamond's case, in his 22 prior starts, 14 quality uh, quality starts. This starts already. A non equality start with the four earned runs. Carroll back in. Mustafa's thrown out. And a Royal score after their leadoff triple is four to nothing.
Baseball on Fox Sports North is brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. By CenturyLink, a different kind of communications company. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Grand Casino, the best stories start here. Scott Diamond yielding four runs early. Salvador Perez, a big part of the Kansas City offense in the opening innings. Pedro Florimon takes strike one. Yeah, as, Perez, as Diamond kind of sits there, you know, okay, I'm down four nothing. Now you cannot give up anymore. Hopefully, the Twins' offense can pick up Diamond in this ball game. It's only the third inning. All strike one and two. Strikes out and Smith has four early strikeouts, four strikeouts through the first uh, trip through the Twins batting line. Yeah, Smith came in, uh, you know, not much of a strikeout pitcher, a season high five in a ball game, but picks up his fourth already. I think two looking, two striking. I think all four of them on the breaking pitch. Here's Ben Revere, singled off Smith's glove. To lead off the first inning for the Twins outside a ball. Smith has actually pitched better on the road in his rookie season than at home at Kauffman Stadium. Line to left, a base hit for Revere, who's got a couple of knocks already tonight. Yeah, fastball left up, good at bat by Ben Revere, just hitting it sharply the other way. Smith on the road in seven starts, three wins, three losses, and ERA just under five. So take a look at this swing of Ben Revere. Good, solid swing. And a Kauffman Stadium, five starts, he's one and four with an ERA over six. Here's Carroll. He's singled to left against Smith. He's now five for five against Smith in his career. Checks his swing. I think he went. Strike one. And Ron Gardenhire saying again today what we knew was the case. They look at a series coming up. They'll get all the pitcher batter matchups, the same information we get before every series, and they'll try to figure out if Carroll's only going to play two games in this series, which two starters does he do the best against? And certainly Smith is one of them, having gone four for four against him. And one for one so far in this ball game. Two strikes. Breaking ball just off the plate. Trying to pick up his fifth major league win. One and two. Two and two. Smith at 6-5, a lot like Scott Diamond, trying to create that good downward plane with the fastball. Straight over the top type pitcher. See him hold that ball, kind of a little split finger for the changeup. And then he'll move it around in the glove if it's a pitch other than that splitter. It'll be a double play ball. Neatly turned by the Royals, and Carroll bounces into a double play. Smith not only retires him, he gets Carroll to hit into a ground ball double play.
AT&T trivia question who was the last twin rookie to win 10 or more games and finish with a sub four ERA. Uh, Eric Milton. Maybe a Brad Ratke. The count is 2 and 0 oh to Jeff Francoeur. He singled and scored in the three run in second inning. Leadoff man has reached in all three innings against Diamond with a double, a single, and a triple. And now it's 3 and 0 oh to Francoeur. Yeah, Diamond no walks in a ball game, two strikeouts. He has given up six hits, and one of them that gift kind of two run triple that coming in the second inning. Well, he walks his first batter here. Diamond doesn't walk many people, rarely, rarely walks a leadoff batter. And he walks uh, the leadoff batter on four pitches. Well, we have a Logan up here with the sister, mom and dad, and Logan uh, you're from Worthington, Minnesota. Your grandpa sang the national anthem. Welcome to the booth. And uh, there you go. You are here by Circle. His pretty, life is now complete. Uh, pretty nice to have your grandpa, your papa, yeah, sing the national anthem today. And he did a great job. I want your grandchildren to have a full life. I hope they never are subjected to you singing the national anthem. Never have. Okay. And, okay. and the same to you. Okay. I've heard you sing. You have never heard me sing. No, I would have remembered it. I think. Lead off walk and now strike one and strike two to Eric Hosmer. Been a struggle for Diamond. The lost fly ball leading to two runs. But if he walks any batter, much less the leadoff batter in an inning on four pitches, you know he's just not sharp with his control. Yeah, that was only his 24th walk, his 22nd unintentional walk in 45 innings pitch. So control has not been an issue. Now let's see if he can get one of the Double plays turned behind him. Tapped up the line foul. Again, 23 double plays for Scott Diamond. He's on the mound. You buy into the, uh, you know, Diamond, most starting pitchers being a creature of habit and that uh, the disruption of not pitching every fifth day a, a factor in what we've seen the last few starts? Yeah, I am only because, you know, I went through it. Uh, I know that you have too much between starts as far as time off. You have to throw more bullpens. You have to do a little bit more. You, you know, you're, you're in situations that uh, you know you're not accustomed to. On four days rest, but you can see that in his young career, he's actually pitched better with more days rest, even though the higher earned run average. Another tapper foul. Now again, one thing about Diamond is he has had a lot of run support this year. Yeah, coming into the ball game, the, the most run support in Major League Baseball, seven and a half runs in six of his 11 starts that he's won. He's had 11 or more runs scored for him when he has finished the ball game or you know got the, the, the win. There's a double play grounder. Florimone will do it himself. And with that arm, why not? Play. Eliminate the middleman when you can run to the bag and throw a P over to Borno. Well, you have to know where you are on the infield, and Florimo knew that if he flipped it over to Carroll, Carroll's got to make a tough turn, but you know what? I can hustle over there, step on the bag like the pitching rubber, and wind up and let it fly. I was interested in uh, watching uh, and listening to Tom Kelly in the pregame show, and in talking about Florimo, he made a note that uh, Florimo looks comfortable out there and it looks like he is more experienced than he is up here. I think I heard Tom say words to that effect and that's a perfect example right there. Florimone with the presence of mind maybe that the Hosmer was not Gerard Dyson running down the line and he had time to make the play himself. Good decision. One strike to Giavatella. And now a ball. Got 
miss one and two. Well, you look at Giannatello, you think of uh, uh, Mike Gallego with the uh, Oakland A's. Yeah. He's kind of built that way. Strong looking. Five foot eight, about 185. Mike Gallego now the third base coach for the Oakland A's. Very high, two and two. Think of someone built like that too, and Ron Say, the Penguin, for right. the Dodgers. And a foul ball. Just facially a little bit. The guy I'm, name I'm going to bring up, he was a little bit taller, but the Twins had a second baseman, Tim Tuffle, mm -hmm. right-handed batter. Yeah, Tuffle was a little thinner. This guy is solid. Tomatella, 25 years old, signed by the Royals in 2008. Their number two pick out of the University of New Orleans. Two and two. And another foul over the Twins' dugout. Royals have gone young over the last couple of years. They've got a young infield, young catcher. You mentioned Frank Coor, the old timer in the outfield. At 28. Yeah. To left center field. That's right. Revere won't get there, and it's going to go all the way to the fence. Giavatella will round second and hold up with a double. A two out double. And that'll bring up Lorenzo Kane. There's that short compact swing by Giavatella. He picks up his sixth double of the year. Breaking ball. Lining it into left center. All the way to that word the bullpen area. Ben Revere gets it back in. I think what uh, we're seeing here tonight, it doesn't make any difference what your name is. It might be Scott Diamond. It might be Scott Aldred. If you throw it over the middle of the plate, you're going to give up a lot of hits. Here's Kane, a double and a triple already. Just outside, ball one. Kane with a double over the third base bag, and then he hit the fly ball lost in the twilight by Josh Willingham. He went for a two run triple. Chopped to third. Nice pickoff by Escobar. And he shows off his arm. And the Royal Strand, Giavatella at second base.
from our GoPro shot. Go back to Chicago. And the White Sox continue to widen the gap. Gordon Beckham going deep down the line against Doug Fister. And the Tigers, who laid an egg out in Anaheim, couldn't get a big hit or a clutch hit, are struggling in that regard now in Chicago. You know, I've, Jim Leland's been frustrated because his team hasn't gotten its lineup on track all year long. Maybe to use the cliche, it is what it is. Maybe it'll it'll never click for them. I've yeah. been waiting for them to run away with the division by eight games. Willingham drives a single to left. They've got the best pitcher in the league. And he's been struggling as of late. As of late, he's been struggling. They have the best hitter in the league. Miguel Cabrera, the, anyone this side of Mike Trout anyway. Last year they had the best closer in there. They've got maybe the most improved starting pitcher in Max Scherzer. And they they can't catch the White Sox. Yeah, you know what? I mean you look not only trying to win the division, but in that wild card race too, the way that the Orioles and and Oakland and Tampa Bay and now the Angels have been playing very good baseball. Right now the Tigers are five games out of the wild card race. Their best shot is to catch the White Sox and they got a great opportunity to do it because they're playing them now. Right. The first game went to the White Sox second game uh, heading in that direction. Here's Morno. Got a hanging curveball and he tapped it foul. So I don't know. I mean, it's you know, the Tigers are one bad week away from the 500 mark. They're 73 and 67. They're about 20 games to play, so every game very important for the Tigers. And the Twins have a chance to be a spoiler. They play the Tigers six more times. Took something off that breaking ball, just in way out front. Called out on strikes in the first inning. Morno will try to deliver a hit here with the count one and two. Willingham aboard. Twins down by four. Check this swing. Nice block by Perez. Is that hard breaking ball? Twins have climbed into a tie with Cleveland. They'd like to catch the Royals too, but. Outside the division. Let's take a look at Perez's block. Two and two. And now three and two. Doman on deck. Outside the Twins division, a team that the Twins can catch fairly easily, I think. The Boston Red Sox. Twins have 59 wins. The Red Sox have 63 and appear to be absolutely collapsing. Lifted foul into the upper deck. That looks like David Ortiz's season might be done. Full count to Morno. He's trying to build an inning here after Willingham single. Missed inside. Single now a walk and Doma to the plate. And the first walk for Will Smith, not missing by much. Doma struck out swinging his first time up. Perez coming out to try to settle down Smith. Center field. Hoping that one swing of the bat here can get the Twins right back into the middle of this game. Double play grounder. And the second double play in as many innings. An inning ender off the bat of Carroll and Domit on the first pitch. 
bounces into a double play. Yeah, Diamond. Uh, excuse me, Will Smith got a jam moment right there. He got the ground ball. This home stand, then another one at Target Field. Then the season's over with, and in the next home stand, there's a three-game series against the Yankees. It is September 24th to the 26th. Good seats remain, and to order your Yankees tickets or any other game left on the schedule, call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com. Twins need to pick me up here from Trevor Plouffe. They need to get on the board here. They've had two great scoring opportunities. A pair of singles to start the first inning. Didn't score then. Now a single and a walk to start the inning. And they need a two out hit here from Plouffe to get Willingham in from third. Two strikes. More and more clubs are pitching Trevor Booth away. Most of his home runs have been middle in as Perez sits down and away. Driven to the right field corner, but yeah, it's and, foul. And, and until Blue starts doing that, I think they're going to continue to do it. You pitch him away and up, all of a sudden Trevor Blue's going to be leaning out there. Then you can sneak the fastball in on. But I think of the 20 home runs, I bet you 15 have been fastballs or breaking balls middle in. Now Perez sets up inside. Check swing. Nope. One and two. In short, if I may try to summarize what you've just said, they're pitching Trevor Plouffe the way they pitched Danny Valencia. Yeah, now it's the adjustment you have to make as a hitter. Pitchers are going to make adjustment. Now it's up to Plouffe to make the adjustment. Waves at the breaking pitch, another strikeout on the curve, and the Twins rally fizzled in the fourth. Anderson, Scott Diamond, but our carsoup.com forward slash baseball question from Kyle Anderson in Duluth wondering about Darren Mastroani and whether he could play a key role in the 2013 Twins. I think he can for sure. I, I think one thing that Darren's had an opportunity to do is when he does play, you, you kind of see what he has, and he's got great speed, pretty good hitter, a 250 career hitter. Not going to hit a lot of home runs, but going to spray the ball. And he can be that fourth outfielder maybe next year for the Twins. Strike one to the leadoff batter for Kansas City, Alcides Escobar. The word opportunity came up so much this year, Dick, you know, for not only the pitching staff, but everyday players like Masterani. And here's a guy that the Twins got from the Toronto Blue Jays. 
selected off waivers from uh, Toronto over the winter. You know, Masterani given that given that chance, and I think he's shown that uh, you know he can play up here. I think what Terry Ryan has tried to reestablish in his first year in his old job to reinforce the notion there are no such things as entitlements in this organization. If you look at how the rosters turned over. Found and found. You look how the rosters turned over. What we say the other night, 29 players on the roster right now, 13 of them were not with this organization a year ago. Guys like Mastroani, who were uh, brought into the organization given that opportunity. And of course, when someone takes the opportunity, it's given to them at the expense of someone else. Two hopper to short, Florimo fires to Morno, head high, perfect throw, one away. Back to our trivia question. You're going with Brad Radke. Oh, Brad Radke. That's probably a better guess than Eric Milton, but we'll see what it is here. Francisco Lariano. That's right. His first year, he was lights out. Made the All Star team. Picked, uh, picked off a couple of those wins uh, as a reliever and then moved into the rotation. And now he's back of the bullpen for the Chicago White Sox. Wouldn't be surprised, though. To see him start against the Twins this weekend. A lot depends on uh, where the White Sox are and what happens in their series with the Tigers. One strike to Gordon. Pull to the right side. Carroll has it. And Diamond having more conventional at bats now than the ones he had in the first three innings. I'm going to tell you, the first couple, you feel like you're too strong, and uh, now Diamond's settling down. He's getting ground ball outs. He's starting to settle down a little bit. Billy Butler with a bouncer to second and a screaming line drive picked off by Carroll. That broke in his glove. <laughs> if it wasn't broken in already. It may have broken his hand if it wasn't <laughs> broken already. Strike one. Asked Carroll the other day, I noticed a bunch of different sized gloves in his locker, and he does carry a different one with him at second base. As uh, when he plays short or third base, and in a nutshell, it might not seem like much, but he said the the glove as you move from third to short to second for him just a little bit smaller all the way across from position to position. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see infielders, you'll see a smaller glove than even what Carroll has right there come out for infield just so they can, you know, kind of get that ball into the an area. Uh, Joe Morgan. Had almost like a, a hand glove that he used to take right. infield with. And the idea is when you're trying to turn a double play, you want to be able to reach into the glove and get the ball right away. You don't want right. to lost in the webbing or anything like that. Two and two. Now Dan Gladden, when he played the outfield, he was kind of like he had TC's glove. Yes. The Bears glove. Yeah. There's Florimo. Might have a little bit bigger glove than Carroll's. And we're talking about maybe a half inch. We're not talking an inch and a half or anything like that. Three and two to Butler. I mentioned before that you know Leo Cardenas was a locker mate of mine when I first came up, and he used to lay his glove down on the ground before a game and take a bat to it, so it would it'd almost be like a pancake. That's how you know it's almost a flat glove. Walk right there, second for Diamond in the ball game. Butler walks. Perez will hit. Well, they. I've told stories for years about scouting players in the Dominican Republic. They don't have gloves using flattened milk cartons, just something to pin the ball against a, a surface uh, to uh, feel the ground ball. Popped up. Looks to be playable for Doman. Nope. Off the roof of the Kansas City dugout. There's a pretty good breeze blowing in from right field. It's calmed down quite a bit from this afternoon, but the wind may have just pushed that out of reach. Yeah, let's stick on that the equipment uh, factor again. Everybody has a glove that they really, I mean, it becomes almost your baby right there. Most <laughs> a former catcher. Yeah. Be used to that. One strike to Perez. 
base hit. He's two for two with a sacrifice fly. Butler will go to third base. And the Royals still aren't done here in the fifth after the two out walk, the two out single. Now these at bats right here against a youngster like Perez are very important for him, but it's also important for the Twins to watch if you're, you know, starting the next day or the following day in this series. You've got to watch these guys, especially these young, talented kids. High fastball right there, good swing by Perez. How do I get him out? Diamond has not found a way yet. So if you're P.J. Walters or Liam Hendricks, you're watching this ball game as close as you should be to learning how am I going to get, say, Mike Moustakis out in this situation. The next day's pitcher used to chart the game from the dugout. I think now what it's done, it's generally done in the clubhouse where you can get the TV angles, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. There's Walters. No chart in his hand, but he is watching. Yeah, everything's on video now. I really don't know why they need the charts. That's true. Ten minutes after the game, you can get somebody online who will have charted the game for you. Why should you do it? We saw Liam Hendricks there, keeping a close eye on Diamond and and you know the game. Breaking ball wide and it's three and zero. And if I'm the pitching coach, I, I want that. I want my starters to be out on that bench when my pitcher's pitching, when your teammates pitching, to watch and learn. Well, I'll bet you uh, Diamond has at least matched, if not exceeded, his total number of four pitch walks in this game alone. He's had two of them already. His third walk of the ball game. I think he did throw a strike to Butler, didn't he? Yes. So now they're loaded up with two gone and Frank Kuro ahead. It's the first season all season long, making his 23rd start. He has walked three in a ball game. So again, that extra day's rest, and I'm going to defend Diamond a little bit because I've been there. You just feel too strong. I thought he was settling down nicely, but he now here with. Two outs in the fifth inning is control getting away from him. Pitch count right now for Diamond 83 pitches, 52 for strikes, three walks, a couple strikeouts. Oh, suddenly a big at bat here for Frank Coor. Twins already down four nothing. Their bases are loaded with two away. Core takes strike one. He's Perdomo warming up. And now two strikes to Frank Cool. And now ahead in the count. Two strikes to the Royal right fielder. One thing that should help Diamond as he tries to finish strongly gives me the impression that he's almost his own pitching coach. He's very uh, introspective about his mechanics. Seems to know what he's doing out there, whether he's doing it right or incorrectly. Trying to make the adjustments as quick as possible. One and two. Diamond came in at a ball game 3.35 ERA. That's ninth best in the American League. Hold the third. Escobar fires to second ahead of the sliding. The stop it. And the Royals leave the bases full on the fifth.
Hanging out here in the Minnesota State Lottery winner's circle right here is Tiffany Burt and her friend Christine right here. And uh, interesting story with her, Burt. She's counting days down to her, uh, to her birthday and yours, 206 to hers, 207 to yours, or maybe vice versa. But how do $100 here, Tiffany, in Minnesota State Lottery scratch-off tickets sound for you? Awesome. Thank you. And being circled by Burt. Must be a good night for you, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you so much. All right, oh, so it makes birthday. her night complete. She's got everything counted down. The interesting thing about her, she's a 1987 birthday. She's very proud of that, and her initials are TC. So she's a lifelong transfer. Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. And you are both here by circle. So if her birthday is April 7th, that must make yours. No, hers is April 6th. Because she had 200, or uh, April 5th. She had 206, I have 207. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. No. Uh -oh. Take a look at this grab right here. Look at that. Two and one to Darren Mastroani. All right, twins have to get on the board right here. Down four, nothing. You have five innings left, but you'd like to make maybe, you know, get back into this ball game. You don't want a big multi run inning. You'd like one, but not going to happen so far. Well, they've started some uh, rallies only to see them fizzle either through strikeout or double play grounders. Astroani singled his first time up. Smith falling behind. He has one walk, four strikeouts, excuse me, five strikeouts. Full count. Escobar will follow and then Florimo. And up high. Mastroani will reach, leading off the fifth. Third time tonight that the Twins have had their leadoff man on. Huh? Follow the Twins with MLB.com at Bat12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, BlackBerry, or Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and much more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit TwinsBaseball.com for details. Here's Escobar. Escobar gave one a ride, sending Gordon back to the warning track in left field for the out. Escobar, not known for his power, is yet to have a major league home run, but not a lot of major league at bats. Escobar at 5'10, about 165. What I know to Escobar. Jerry Lane says that's low, 2 0. Perez looks over his left shoulder. Ned Yost chirping from the dugout. Where was that? Paul Molitor used to do what Escobar does get up there and rest that bat on his right shoulder like that. And that pitcher's ready to throw that ball toward home plate. Just lift it up a little bit. Three and oh, and yet yeah, Yost can't believe it. Uh, this last one, I believe, a little high. Yes. See the second pitch right at the knees. Jerry Lane, the crew chief behind home plate. Last three games of the Cleveland series, tying Cleveland in the standings. They're trailing Texas 5 1 in the fifth. 3 and 1. And you're going to get another fastball right here. Let's see if Escobar can take advantage of it. If you get a base hit, and it may be an extra base hit. Watch Astorani run around the bases. 3 and 1. Back-to-back -back walks, and it's the second time, now third time, in five innings, where the Twins have had their first two batters on base. Lee Milan, the pitching coach, will come out and talk to Smith. Smith does have four wins this year, so it's not like he should be 
getting the fifth inning itis here. Well, I know he's averaged about three walks per uh, nine innings in his young career. Again, just making his 13th major league start. He's walked three of the last five batters, and now Florimo will hit. Are leading Tampa Bay seven to one in the eighth inning. So it looks like the Orioles will, at the very least, keep the heat on the Yankees, who are tied in the seventh against the Red Sox. Floribone with runners at first and second, nobody out. He went down swinging on a curveball his first time up. Strike one. Times where the curveball's been put in play, he's gotten a lot of swings and misses with that pitch. Well, he's keeping the ball, that breaking ball, down very nicely. He's almost like Scott Diamond, straight over the top type pitcher. There it is again, and Florimone's gone on three pitches. The, uh, that's a little harder curveball right there with two strikes. And strikeout number six in the ball game for Will Smith. Six strikeout is a career high at the major league level for Smith. So Florimo way out in front on a pitch down in the dirt. Now Revere has got a pair of hits. The Twins have five singles against Smith, and Revere has two of them an infield hit and a liner to left. Ball one. Is two hits. Revere's average up to 304. And a call strike with the breaking pitch. One and one to the twin center fielder. Have some speed on the bases. We saw them try a double steal earlier and saw Perez throw out the trail runner at second base. Ken with the breaking pitch. He threw one for a call strike. And he got that swing and a miss curveball again. I think what that tells you is that breaking ball's got a very tight rotation for some of the swings that the Twins have had against Will Smith here tonight. Looks like a fastball, and then the ball just dipping away. Floor low. That looks like a fastball, then down and in. Let's see what Smith throws here. He's ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. There goes Mastroani. And a sidearm throw. Got him! Perez threw sidearm on target. To Mustakas out number two. I'll tell you what, this young man again, I said it earlier, he's going to be fun to watch over the years. Young man from Venezuela has an outstanding arm. Mastroni got a little bit of a late jump and then the sidearm throw right on the mark. Mustakas, all he has to do is apply the tag. Good call. Two and two now to Revere. Twins kind of running themselves out of some innings in the first inning. A double steal attempt right there, Masterani. 
you have to make sure 95 percent that you're going to make it to third not in a four nothing deficit ball game. And Revere lifts it foul with Escobar taking off on the pitch. Yeah, that's the shame of it. The Twins should have scored at least a run in the first inning, but they had uh, Carroll thrown out at second. Should have gotten at least one run in the fourth, but the double play ball kind of extinguished that threat. Now three and two to Revere with two outs after Smith walked the first two batters. Has time to make the play, and the Twins again get the first two batters on in the inning and can't score. Day for the game against the Royals. We're going to see a chance for a shower or two throughout the course of the game. It's going to be brief, but still something to watch out for. First pitch temperature at 68. Winds out of the southwest between 5 to 10 miles per hour. And today, today only, we've had Kansas City type of weather here for the opening game of this series. It'll be good old Minnesota September weather rest of the way. Make you feel strong, baby. Hosmer, the hitter, a foul ball in the first pitch. Joey that cotton candy, Dick. Yeah. The center, Revere, going back, going back, makes a great running catch. A terrific play by Ben Revere again in center field. Boy, he had to get on his horses right there to come up with that catch. Hosmer hitting this ball on a line and Ben Revere you can see his speed. Wow. That's a nice catch. Leaping up at the last second to get that line drive out. Johnny Giavatello will hit. Tampered a short Florimo. Notice and he's had, I think, one throwing error. But his throws across the diamond are not only strong, I mean, they are nine times out of ten chest high. Now he had a play where he cut behind the mound and he made that barehanded pickup and slung it over to Morno. It was a low throw, but when he gets a chance to get his legs underneath him, that's a pretty accurate throw. He's got a cannon. Two down on the sixth. Here's Kane. It's more like Scott Diamond right here. You know, get some ground ball outs, get some quick outs. Three pitches so far, two outs here in the sixth inning. Strike one. He hasn't pitched well, at least early in the ball game. He did, and he did have some 
misfortune with the lost fly ball in the, the twilight. Yeah, if that ball's caught right there, think about it. It's only it's a two nothing ball game. Right. One and one. Willingham joining a long list of outfielders who find it impossible to catch what they cannot see. Swing and a miss, one and two. Good change up there. Yeah, not much you can do about that. And as a pitcher, when that happens, just you know what? We're going to save you a lot more than that's going to happen. So you you go on and uh, you try to put zeros on the board. What Diamond's been able to do since that uh, one run he gave up in the third inning. Keep it at four nothing. Two and two. Wow. Said it quite often over the years. We had an All-Star game at the Dome. We had all those playoff games. Eight World Series games. We'll take a look at the location here. Take a look. That looks like a pitcher's pitch right there. Yeah. And a base hit to left. Crack back where Kane now has a single to go with his double and triple. And we'll bring up Escobar. Time for the Century Link high speed pitch. Scott Diamond uh, trying to get this final out here in the sixth inning. Clocked as high as 91. And Will Smith at 93. Five shot out innings so far. For Will Smith. Kane looks like he'll have a one chance anyway to complete the cycle with a home run. Anyway, we had all the those playoff games, the World Series games, and not one game, thankfully, was lost or won by a ball lost in the ceiling. This one hit to the gap. Kane can run. He'll run to third and he'll be held there. The first cutoff man was missed by Willingham. But Carroll there to back it up. So again, the Royals putting together a, a threat with two gone in the inning. Yeah, Escobar picking up his first hit. It's a double, his 28th of the year. And with two outs, a breaking ball left up. Escobar, good solid swing, driving that ball into left center. Here's Gordon, a couple of ground outs and a triple. Gordon with a hooking drive to the gap in deep right center, just out of the reach of Ben Revere. Popped up left side, should end the inning. Florimone drifting back. He'll give way to Willingham, who makes the catch. 11 pitches in the sixth inning, and it's a scoreless six for Scott Diamond. Home runs by Austin Jackson and Miguel Cabrera at U.S. Cellular Field. Jackson's with a man aboard to tie it. And a couple of at bats later, 
Peavy misses his spot, and Cabrera hits one to almost the same spot in left center, and the Tigers have a 3-2 lead. Well, Peavy given an early 2-0 lead, but the Tigers hit a couple of home runs, trying to even the series at a game apiece. Well, Carroll against Will Smith and Willingham and Morno. Now, Twins have been able to get some base runners on against Will Smith. He has yet to have a 1 2 3 inning. Carroll takes a pitch that missed someplace. Looked like it was hit down the middle. Ball one. One and one. Carroll with a single and an inning, inning ending ground ball double play. Breaking ball one and two. Pirates lost again. They are now 72 and 69. Five losses in a row. Two and two. Incredibly, the Phillies and Brewers are trying to be a factor in the National League wild card. Carroll takes a call, third strike to start the six. Yeah, we've seen a lot of breaking balls when he gets ahead in the count by Will Smith. He picks up his seventh strikeout. Career high. And that kind of throws Carroll right here. Started the outer half, then right down the middle. So Carroll frustrated as the Twins have been all night long against Will Smith. Here's Willingham called out on strikes and a single to left. The knuckles and an easy play for Escobar. Two down. Smith has thrown just 82 pitches in the game. And that'll bring up Morno. Morno with a strikeout and a walk. Balls up. Morno had a good series against Cleveland. A couple of home runs, including a walk off on Sunday, and a couple of run producing at bats last night. Two and one. The two home run game. Including the walk off. There's a base hit to right center. Morno driving it toward the gap, cut off by Frank Boer. And Morno knows better to test that on. Wow. But I think the two home run game, Bert, gave Morno or brought him some visibility for what he's done this year. He's become an everyday ball player for the Twins again. And the numbers. Get a look at his solid single to right center. And these are important because they're off a left handed pitcher right there. Right. Justin, of course, struggling a little bit. The two home runs off of right handers. But those at bats right there, he hung in there very nicely. Smith left that breaking ball up, and Justin did the right thing and hitting that ball sharply in the right field. But given all the uncertainty surrounding Forno in spring training, would you have taken the numbers that he apparently will put up, including? 525 at bats, 20 or more home runs, 85 runs batted in, an average in the oh, 280 range. Would you have taken that coming out of spring training? And I, well, the big thing I think would Justin have taken that? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think he would have because there was so much uncertainty of the concussion and what he had to go through last year, all the little surgeries, and uh, I think if anything, this is going to make him. Sleep a lot better during the winter, knowing that going into spring training, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm ready to go. And I think it will encourage him too to really get after it to prepare for 2013 because he's been able to be a baseball player again and he hasn't really had any reoccurrence of the concussion symptoms. Two and one. Hold on the line, backhanded nicely by Mustakas. He is as good as it gets in the American League at third base.
for the Royals against Scott Diamond. Yeah, with two outs in that second inning, the ball lost uh, in, in the twilight, and a couple runs scored, three runs scored off of uh, Scott Diamond in that inning. And the story of the game also, Will Smith. Six shutout innings so far with a career high at the major league level, seven strikeouts. So Smith in position to pick up the win here as we begin playing the seventh inning. The Twins go to their bullpen. Six innings for Scott Diamond, and now the seventh started by Luis Perdomo. And Don Scott Diamond, 98 pitches, 63 for strikes in six innings. And, you know, if that ball is uh, caught right there or found in the air, he only gives up two runs rather than four. For Perdomo, making his seventh relief appearance for the Twins. Came to the big leagues in 2009 with the San Diego Padres a little bit there in 2009 and 10. This is his second step with the Twins as a September call up. Sticks a fastball on the outside corner. Butler has walked lined out and grounded it. Slider for a swinging strike two. Well, we have seen from Perdomo not a lot of outings, a, a good fastball, and then that slider, but he left that one up. On an 0 2 pitch, Butler lines it over the reach of Morno for a leadoff single. On Friday night, the Twins will be home against the Central leading White Sox, and the Twins will help get you ready for the upcoming cooler weather. The first 10,000 fans at the game will get this Twins bomber hat presented by Pepsi. Order your tickets for Friday's game or any other game left on the schedule. Call 833-TWINS or visit TwinsBaseball.com. I can see you wearing one of those on those frosty January mornings on the golf course. You see me wearing one of those while I'm shoveling my driveway in now, January. First of all, you probably do not shovel your driveway. I have a snowblower. I have a snowblower. Toward the hole. Get one. Florimone. Get one. Out there, and no relay, but a good play by Florimone with a very quick throw to Jamie Carroll. That's all you're thinking right there if you're a pitcher. Just get one, and Florimone able to do that. Because that ball looked like trouble. That looked like it was going to go in the left field, but Formal cut it off and threw a rocket over to Carroll. Carroll thought about turning this double player, attempting to, but watch right here if we show it all the way. Carroll just had a little trouble getting a good grip on that ball, which he did. And but they do get the out, the lead out of Butler at second base. Over the weekend, Tom Bernanski, Florimone's former hitting coach, was raving about. Florimone's range, and maybe we saw an example of it there. Just having the quickness and the speed to get both hands engaged in fielding the ball rather than backhanding it. You know, he had his throwing hand right there by the pocket of the glove, ready to deliver a throw. Domo wanting a new uh, baseball. Two and zero. Oh. Side three and zero. Perdomo, 28 years old from the Dominican Republic, started the season in Double A, then moved up to Rochester. Called up by the Twins in late July. And Anthony Swarzak was put on a disabled list, then set back in the middle of August. We don't see the Royals every day, but we do see them a lot. You think anybody in the American League who's better at third base right now defensively than Mike Moustakis? Guy at Texas is pretty good. Yeah, that's true. Adrian Beltre. Three and one to Mustakis. After the Morno. And he 
gets the force at second and no return throw. Two down. Well, we did that play, Ron Coomer and I, exactly last night in the instructional. We saw it a couple times in yesterday's ball game where the pitcher has to get over there. Duno did a great job of getting over there. And right there, Perdomo, he becomes the first baseman, but no relay throw. Here's Frank Coor. Big swing and a foul. Sure. Perdomo right here gets over there quickly in case of a relay throw, but Gormo not throwing it. One strike to Frank Coor. Spring training next year for Domo. The Twins don't really know a lot about him. You know, he spent a lot of time in the minor leagues, but you know, a little bit with the Padres. Spent time in the minor leagues in the Indian organization, the Cardinal organization, the Padres, and this year the Twins. A nice changeup. Got a little pop fly to right field for the third out. A nice inning for Perdomo. Trailing four to nothing, hoping for some heroics in the bottom of the seventh inning. And as we honor America on the 11th anniversary of the tragic events of 9 11 in 2001, we will present to you proudly Sarah Poland singing of God Bless America. We ask you to please rise. And join Sarah Pollard as she leads us in the singing of God Bless America. God bless America. And that I love stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home.
Football on Fox Sports North is brought to you by McDonald's. Quench your thirst. Get any size soft drink or sweet tea for just one dollar. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Loof tries to bunt and bunts up to the screen. One strike. Smith still out there. He's pitched six shutout innings. That was just his 92nd pitch. Yeah, the long, longest outing Smith has gone in a major league game, seven innings, and he's done that three times. Giving up six hits to the Twins. One and one. All singles. Popped up. The struggles for Blue continue. Alvatella catch one away. Blue full for three tonight. That'll bring up Master on. Mastroani's reached both times a single and a walk. Yeah, he was thrown out at third base in the fifth inning with one out. Strike one. That's a, that's a pitch right there that's really given the Twins offense trouble. That hard curveball. Looks like a fastball from that angle that he's creating. And there's a good fastball. We're going to get a look at a pretty good right handers curveball tomorrow in Luke Hoshier. If he can get it open. Remember that outing in Kansas City. Twins jumped on him early because he was kind of all over the place. And had a tough time getting that curveball. O'Shaver having a frustrating year, seven and thirteen with an ERA about five and a half. Two and two, and Mastrani flares at foul. PJ Walters will be on the mound tomorrow night for the Twins, looking for his third win. Swing and a foul just to stay alive. Bo Shaver, see his numbers. And PJ Walters. Two and two to Mastron. Takes up high three and two. Three walks in a ball game, seven strikeouts for Will Smith. Warming up in the Kansas City bullpen. Mastroni's taken Smith's pitch count over 100. And another foul. Those pitches Smith has thrown in a ball game. You have to go back to July 24th in LA when he faced the uh, Angels. Seven very good innings. He allowed only two hits in seven innings. And a win. From Astron. Driving it to left center field, and he'll hold up with a one out center. So he finally got something he could handle, and he blistered it into left center. Yeah, that's a very good at bat. He fought off some nasty pitches, kind of had a check screen a couple times. Finally, Smith, fastball right there. Astron hitting it right back up the middle, picking up his second hit, and the seventh for the Twins. Escobar with well, a warning track fly ball to left and a walk. This won't come as news to anybody who follows baseball even marginally, but every once in a while it serves as a good reminder. You look at the teams like the Royals, who had a good August, 
and they're doing better now than they did at the start of the year. The Mariners, the A's, any team that gets on a little bit of a roll does it with good starting pitching. And therein has been the downfall of the Twins over the course of this season. Why have the Yankees been catchable? Because they've had some injuries and their starting pitching hasn't been very good. So as the Twins hope to rebound from a second straight disappointing season, there's no secret as to how to go about you know, finding the cure. I think the best surprise, and, and probably you know, if you're an Oriole fan, that's that's a fair ball. And Escobar is retired with. Perez picking it up and tagging it. That ball looked like it stayed right on that chalk line. Kind of a swinging bunt, and Perez quickly jumping out behind home plate right there. Just tagging out Escobar. Jerry Lane seeing where that ball is. Escobar retired, Mastroani going to second, and here's Florimo. Up the middle. Backhanded by Giavatella. Good play with a nice stretch by Hosmer. Seven shutout innings for Will Smith, and the Royals hang on to their board on the game. Presented by Wells Fargo each week at live games on Fox Sports North or Fox Sports North Plus and online at FoxSportsNorth.com. See the uh, games coming your way on Friday. Perdomo delivering to Hosmer up and away, ball one. Osmer digs a pitch out, driving it to the gap in left center field. He's got at least a double. A lead off double in the eighth against Perdomo. Second time we saw Hosmer hit a ball down a long way. I mean, that ball that Ben Revere made a great running catch in the sixth inning was down. That off to Scott Diamond. And right here, a pitch down, not a bad pitch. But Hosmer just dropping a barrel of bat and hitting it. Sharply in the left center. So Osmer picking up his second hit on his 21st double. And now Giavatone. Giavatello with a double. Woods being out hit 12 to 7. And of course, the Royals have mixed in a few extra base hits. Into center field, a base hit. Osmer rounds third. Revere coming up with the throw. It's cut off by Escobar. And the Royals lead it five to nothing. Giavatella picking up his second hit on his 12th RBI. 
just like that the Royals make it a five nothing lead. Lorenzo Kane with a double triple and a single already. Yeah, Kane started the ball game off with a double down that left field line and then the lost two run triple that gave the Royals an early three nothing lead. Then he singled in the sixth inning. So a home run away from hitting for the cycle. And Kane has some pop in his bat. See what uh, he gets to hit here. This is his first at bat with a chance to complete the cycle. Alex Burnett warming up. Kane with seven home runs on the year. His season started late in July. Spent most of the first half of the season on the 60 day disabled list. Oh, my. For Doma. Hitting Kane in the helmet. Kane appearing lucid, carrying out a conversation with the trainer. Up, but that's a good sign. And we'll try the first. And Ron Gardenhire will get Perdomo out of the game. Well, let's see, it's a uh, yeah. that's a fastball or a breaking ball right there. Thank goodness he's all right. Ooh. Thank goodness for ear flaps. Yes. Well, maybe right above or behind the ear flap. Kane appears to be okay. That's the best thing that's happened here in the eighth inning. And Burnett will pitch next for the Minnesota Twins. Mr. Killebrew, this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. I walked by that statue today and I can't help it. Every time I walk by that, I stop for a moment and I pause and I say hello to him. Yeah, I think about Harmon. Hey, Harmon. Well, Alex Burnett coming in, making his 60th relief appearance. He pitched once in that uh, four-game series against the Indians that on Friday night. A run in, two runners on, nobody out, and ball one to Escobar. Good to see Kane. Uh, yeah. Okay, over at first base. We should mention that we're. Greatly relieved that Brandon McCarthy was yes. hit by a line drive. 
was released from a Bay Area hospital today. Yeah, the last couple of days they had him moving around, and uh, good to see that. Two and zero to Escobar. Shot past Eduardo Escobar into the corner. Two runs are going to score. And Alcides Escobar looking for a triple and he's in. So another extra base hit for the Royals and two more runs with both Gian Vitella and Keane scoring here in the eighth. Yeah, Escobar picking up his second extra base hit, a double in the sixth inning here, a two run triple. His seventh triple of the year, right down that third baseline, out of the reach of Escobar, into the corner. The Twins open. The, excuse me. The Royals open up the ball game with a seven nothing lead. Big swing by Gordon, a miss with the infield halfway in. Kane's going to be looked at. By the trainer after running from first all the way home on the triple. Tapper to second. Carroll throws to Borno for an out. Escobar holds the third. Going to the eighth in Chicago with Detroit still leading three to two. Boston beat the Yankees four to three. Baltimore beat Tampa Bay, so that means in the East, the Orioles are back into a tie with New York. And the Rays remain two games back. Gets by Dolman. And another run will score. So Burnett spinning a breaking pitch in the dirt and it has turned into a four run inning. You know, twice in that Cleveland series, we saw a runner from third score on a wild pitch. And here in this first game, I don't recall over the last two plus years here at Target Field, we have seen guys like this score from third base on a wild pitch. I think it's, I think you'd agree with me, we've seen Dolman uh, do an excellent job of blocking pitches uh, throughout the season, but he's had two wild pitches charged to his pitchers here tonight. Well, it's tough when that ball is in front just right. on the other side of home plate it has a lot of spin on it. That was a breaking ball right there. So it's not going to always, you know, get right at you and get deflected off the donut got by him. Butler trying for that home run. It's been frustrating. It's a, a milestone. He'd like to get taken care of. If he doesn't get it here tonight. It'll be his 23rd game when he's been where he's been stuck at 99 home runs. Well, 25 home runs on the year. That is a career high for Billy Butler. Two and one. Two and two. I mentioned the Royals getting younger. Butler seems like he's been around forever. He's only 26 years old. Already in his sixth season with the Royals. Driven foul down the right field line. Hey, you don't see too many young kids that really accept that DH role. Billy Butler has accepted that. And he's a 300 hitter. He could definitely swing that bat. Royals number one pick back in 2004. Life for DHs will change next year. I think the Twins are going to release their 2013 schedule tomorrow. And with Houston coming over to the American League and they're always being an interleague series, you won't have a week and a half at a time where a designated hitter is going to have to either pinch it, put someplace where he might get hurt. There might be a series here or there over the course of the schedule. There's a bouncer to third. But you can. Uh, you can withstand that. It's it's tough when you're a DH and you played in three National League cities in a row, and you might 
not play much at all or be stuck at first base or some other position you're not comfortable in. Well, you know what? I, I like you. We got kind of a uh, a tentative schedule on that, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the one that's coming out. But I looked at it that there's four games here in National League games here, three on the road. And they're like April, May, and then I believe uh, in August. So it's not like what you're talking about. You know, we're all, they're all clustered together, bunched together. Right, right. So the Twins will go to three National League cities next year, and four will come here. Well, now by my count, this is my memory. We'll go to Milwaukee. We'll go to Washington. We'll go to Miami. Miami and we'll Atlanta. go to Atlanta. So there'll be four. Right. Yeah, I believe Milwaukee is two in Milwaukee and then two here. Right. So it's a four game series pretty much, but two in Milwaukee, two here. It's like a playoff series. Yeah. They get home field advantage because one and two. To Perez. I know the Mets come here if I'm right. Yes, I believe uh, the version I saw uh, had the Mets coming here. And the Philadelphia Phillies. Was the other team coming here along with the Brewers. And I believe there's one more. Well, let's just wait and see. Where are we going to be on April 6th? We're going to be, I believe, in Baltimore. Again? Are we in Baltimore this year for your birthday? Yes, we were, and I, I believe the schedule is that uh, we open up here against the Tigers on April 1st. That's the schedule of Rice. One and two. To Perez. And tap foul. Oh, Miami comes here. And then we also go to Miami. I have not seen a ballpark in Atlanta. I have not seen that beautiful new ballpark that uh, is uh, in uh, Miami. We did an exhibition game in Mill in uh, Atlanta at the end of spring training last year. Weren't you there? I may have been, but uh, <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> okay. You don't remember being there? No. I probably was there. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure you were. Pretty sure you were. Oh, I was there. Yes, I was. Because Don Sutton does the. Uh, yeah, well. Work for the uh, right. for the Braves. Hey, you know. But that was one game. That's not. It didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything. There's a drive to center off the bat of Perez, and Revere goes back. And that ends the inning. Good inning for the Royals. They score four more. That was your Hall of Fame here. The whole year's just a blur. It's a blur.
Kansas City Royals at Target Field. And in our postgame show, Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, we're going to get the breakdown on the postgame from Tom Kelly, the one and only TK, whose number is hanging out here in left field forever. Ron Gardhire's postgame uh, comments from the clubhouse. You will not want to miss what Gardy has to say tonight. And our instructional tonight features Tom Kelly. We're going to go over infield play as our instructional tonight with two Twins Hall of Famers. Bert Blylev and also Tom Kelly. You know TK, Dick and Bert, especially you, Bert. He's a stickler for details. And on infield play, there are a lot of details. And nobody better to hear from a guy who won two World Series rings. Yeah, thank you very much, Robbie. Yes, stickler on defense because he wants you to be the best you can be. Do it the right way. Aaron Crow coming in after Will Smith shut down the Twins. Seven shutout innings. Crow, hard throwing right hander, making his 64th relief appearance. Down and in ball one. Revere, Car excuse me, Revere, Carroll, and Willingham. Like the Twins, the strength of the pitching staff is the bullpen for the Kansas City Royals. A combined 3.02 ERA. Vitale charges, retires Revere, one away. And that is third best in the American League as far as bullpen ERAs behind the Rays and the Oakland A's. Rasmussen College is proud to present student days every Wednesday at Target Field. Students can attend the Twins Royals game tomorrow at 7:10. Get a standing room only ticket for just eight bucks. Student day tickets are available beginning at 9 a.m. tomorrow. There's a limit of one ticket per student with a valid ID. For more information, visit twinsbaseball.com or call 833 Twins. Here's Carroll. Tigers had a 3-2 lead over the White Sox. Going into the eighth inning, the White Sox went to their new relief pitcher, Francisco Liriano. How do you do? He hit the first batter and gave up hits to the next two, and they took him out. So in a roundabout way, the Twins can be a spoiler. <laughs> they might have already been. <laughs> Jesse Crane, another former twin reliever, coming in trying to put out the fire. Two and one. Then a flat night for the Twins. Would you agree? Yeah. They've just been kind of flat. They haven't played well in the field. They haven't run the base as well. They haven't pitched well. I just think they've had opportunities, just not able to get that big hit. They tried to. I think they ran themselves out of a couple innings. The second inning, uh, they hit into two double plays. Excuse me. They ran themselves out of the first inning. Right on a double steal, and then uh, Mastroni getting thrown out with one out, a couple runners on in the fifth. And now Carroll draws a one out one. <laughs> Perez has thrown out a couple of runners on the bases, stolen base uh, attempts. Well, watch Perez's arm right here. This is a double steal. He throws, you know, as Revere went to third, he threw out Carroll at second, and then the sidearm whip. To Mustafa's getting out Masterani. Right after that play happened, we got a side shot to actually the other side of Perez with his mask off, and he looked out at Will Smith and gave him a little wink. Like, I got you covered, bro. Uh, he's a rookie, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> One strike to Willingham. Base hit. Nice block there, boy. That pitch landed in the front of the left-handed batter's box, and Perez kept it right at his feet. Well, you know, again, he had left knee surgery in March, and right there does a good job of getting his body in front of it, deadening the ball. It up wide at first. Hosmer tracking it in foul ground. Well, number two. And that'll bring up Morno. Morno with a walk, a single, and a strikeout. 
Again, the Twins with seven hits, but all singles. Down and away, ball one. Rose done a good job of keeping the ball in the park. Only four home runs allowed. This is his 64th relief appearance. Morno drives one down the line, sharply to Gordon, a base hit, sending Carroll to second base. Well, I think that's what we're talking about, Justin. I believe in his last at bat, Dick. That's another good sign for Justin when he starts driving the ball the other way. Home runs will come with this big monster right here, but you know, he won the MVP that year because he did that. He just hit the ball the other way with some power. Hit the ball where it's pitched. Here's Doman. 0 for 3. Missing the inside corner ball on. Crow, a teammate of Kyle Gibson's, the former uh, number one draft pick for the Twins, who had Tommy John surgery, working his way back. As the Twins are looking for starting candidates for next year, Gibson's name will be on that list. And don't you think that what has happened to the Washington Nationals this year will prove to be a test case? For pitchers coming back from Tommy John surgery from this point forward, that the Twins will also have Scott Baker, perhaps if they re-sign him coming back. Someone will have Scott Baker, and they may see these pitchers who are coming back from that surgery may see themselves in the bullpen in the first couple months of the year, like Chris Medlin of the Braves, and then moved into the rotation. Drilled to center, Dolman with a base hit, and Carroll will score. Fumbled in center. By Kane, Morno will be held at third, and Doman will go to second. So the Twins are on the board. Yeah, Doman, sharp base hit. Kane came in, kind of bobbled it a little bit. And Justin, I think he would have made it over to third anyway, as Doman picks up an RBI of 66. But I believe an error will be charged to Kane to allow Doman to go from first to second. Right there, that ball came up on him a little bit. Justin was taken off the third. It is a base hit on the eye for Dolman, and then the air by Kane allowing Dolman to get in the scoring position. Trevor Plouffe will come up with a couple men in scoring position. Blue foe for three, a fly ball, a strikeout, and a pop up. Swing and a miss, and a breaking pitch. Very tight slider that the Crow has. Last year, represented the Royals in the American League All Star game. Another tight slider. And you would think after those two swings, it's going to be another tight slider right here. Come on, baby. Off the plate, one and two. And he laid off that tight slider. Not only does Trevor Bluff need to find it here in the final weeks, the Twins need him to find it too. Establish what type of player he might be for them next year. Come on. Come on, baby. And after another breaking pitch, another tight slider. Saw four of them, swung at three of them. The inning ends. The Twins get one in the eighth.
has not been a good night for the Twins. Their three game winning streak about to come to an end unless they can put together a big rally in the night. I think they also have to credit Will Smith. I mean, I thought he had a very tight curveball, a career high seven strikeouts and seven shutout innings. Off of Burnett to Blue or to Escobar, rather. He got him. What a play! By Eduardo Escobar, and they will check on Alex Burnett. Man alive, does Escobar have a strong arm? Well, you like getting assist at the major league level, but not like that. Well, the word that uh, got Alex Burnett definitely looked like in the foot, maybe the right ankle area. Let's take a look right here. Yeah, right off the right shin area, and Escobar. Good strong throw. Wow. Stock is a 1 5 3 put out. Stock is retired. Play going 1 5 3. That says he is. Well, he's saying it right now. I think he wants to stay in. Give me one guy and we'll see what happens. Let's take another look right here. That right foot. And actually, he deflected it very nicely. Jeff Rancourt will hit. Strike one. Coleman warming up in the Kansas City bullpen. Burnett uses his glove this time. Two assists. Yeah, a little better hop right there. <laughs> that one you say thank you very much. And now Eric Hosmer. Yeah, the previous at bat, you're just trying to get out of the way, and it just ended up uh, ricocheting off of him. That one, a nice little hop back to him. Detroit taking a 5 2 lead into the bottom of the eighth against Chicago. Liriano with his first relief appearance for Chicago. Three batters face, no outs, two earned runs. Strike one. Let's see, if I'm watching a ball game and I see Eric Hosmer, if I'm pitching tomorrow, I'm going to try to pitch him up the ladder a little bit because. The two balls that he really hit hard today were balls down like that. This is deep to left. And gone a home run. Hosmer with a single, a double, and now a home run in the ninth against Burnett. Again, a pitch pretty much down in the strike zone. So his last three at bats have pitch been pitches down, and he has gone down and driven them a long way. Osmer with his 14th home run of the year. Taking that breaking ball the other way. Ooh, look where his back foot ends up. Yep. On the other side of the plate. Ball just getting over the fence. But it's a 9-1 Kansas City lead. Giavatello will hit. Indians trying to come back on the Rangers. 6-3 top of the eighth in Arlington. Home run allowed by Alex Burnett, only his fourth home run allowed. This being his 60th relief appearance. Sharply hit into center field. Well, everything except the comebacker off the bat of Frank Coor has been hit sharply against Burnett. Here in the ninth inning. Giavatella picking up his third hit of the ball game. And Kane has uh, yet another chance to complete the cycle. Never thought that would have been possible. 
as he came to the plate in the eighth inning. George Brett, who not only hit for the cycle in 1990, he won his final batting championship in 1990. Becoming the first man to win a batting title in three different decades the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, he's the last one to hit for the cycle. Six Royals have hit for the cycle. First one was Freddie Patek against the Twins back in 71. Fouled away. Two strikes. Had a chance hitting for the cycle in the eighth inning, but Luis Perdomo hit him in the helmet. It's good to see Kane up again here. I mean, you don't want him up here, but after getting hit in the head, he's still in the game. 0 oh and 2 from Burnett. Two feet in front of the left handed batter's box, blocked by Dolan. Yeah, I mentioned there have been six cycles hit by the Royals two by George Brett, two by Frank White. Fred, Freddie Patek, the first one, and then the other, John Mayberry. I would have loved to have seen that triple. <laughs> now in the Cleveland series, we mentioned that uh, Travis Hafner mm -hmm. hit for the cycle against the Twins at the Dome. Tapper to short. Ooh, Florimo nearly spun his wheels, but he makes the play in the end again. Osmer has a home run, and the Royals again lead by eight. Ball game as the Royals have a nine to one lead. Will Smith, maybe the best start of his young career, making just his 13th major league start. Seven shutout innings, a career high seven strikeouts. He did walk three, and Kane have a very good day at the plate. A single, double, triples, a couple runs driven in. He scored a run. Have their hitting shoes on here tonight. The Coleman comes in for the 34th time, protecting an eight run lead. At least that they hope that's what he'll be doing. Yeah, Coleman, um, just 26 years old in his second season with the Royals. Mastroani will lead things off. Coleman kind of gives you that crossfire type delivery, a good fastball, hard slider, and a changeup. One and one. Two. There's that crossfire with the fastball at 91. Right. 
Fastball off the plate two and two. for the first time tonight. Jimmy John's delivery of the game, the Kansas City starting pitcher. Yeah, Will Smith looking for his fifth major league win. He had that curveball working tonight, mixed in the fastball very nicely, got ahead in the count, and then dropped that hammer on the uh, Minnesota Twins offense. Career high seven strikeouts. It's exactly what the Royals, you know, are looking for is starting pitching. This is also audition time for Will Smith for next year. For their rotation. So a good performance here tonight. Escobar 0 for 2 with a walk as a right-handed batter now as a lefty. Down and away, one and one. Right-handed breaking pitch for a call and strike. Yeah, Coleman signed by the Royals in 2009 out of LSU. Last year in the bullpen, very good, 2.98 ERA. Excuse me, 8.7 ERA in 48 games. And Escobar finds a single up the middle with one out here in the ninth. And now Pedro Florimon will hit. The Twins pick up their 10th hit, but all of them singles here tonight. Florimon hitless, a couple of strikeouts and a ground ball to second. Ball one. Joaquin Benoit put out a fire in the eighth inning, and Detroit has a 5 3 lead going to the ninth. Ah, on the outside corner, one and one. Foul. One and two. Well, we're looking at that uh, Chicago Detroit ball game, also the Angels. Yeah. They've been playing very good baseball there uh, in at home against the Oakland A's, who they're trying to catch in that wild card race. And how have they uh, reemerged as a contender? Really good starting pitcher. Hoping to get Jared Weaver back later this week. He's supposed to start on Thursday. Yep. Zach Grinke pitching a lot better. Two and two. But Milwaukee and Philadelphia winning again. On the National League side, just five games out of the wild card. Milwaukee beat Atlanta, the wild card leader. Along with St. Louis. The Cardinals are up early in San Diego. I think that's what's really made it interesting with two teams going through right. the wild card. It's just not, you know, one. It's now it's two. Line to Hosmer for out number two. Loramon hits it hard finally for out number two. You know, in a ball game like this, nine to one. Hosmer's going to play deep if he's holding on the runner in a close ball game. That might be an extra base hit. But instead, with Hosmer playing a deep first base, it's a nice uh, line drive out. Twins down to their last out. Ben Revere has a couple of hits. His hits came early in the first and third inning.
One strike. Escobar goes and the pitch grounded up the middle ahead. Escobar will go to third. And we'll hold him there. So Revere has his third single. And the runners now are at first and third with two away. Right, and waited back nicely on this pitch right here. From Coleman, that breaking ball, taking it right back up the middle. Hit for the Twins again, all singles and 16 hits for the Royals. Half of them have been extra base hits. Here's Carroll, walked and scored his last time up. Also singled way back in the first inning. Ball one. Goes Royals don't care. It's a called strike one and one with Revere gaining second base on defensive indifference. Two and one. Score a couple runs against Coleman here. Get Willingham to the plate. A high fly to deep left. Gordon under it. And the Royals win the open convincingly. Nine to one. Will Smith out dueling Scott Diamond, Anthony LaPanta. The Twins will hope that the Cleveland script will repeat itself. Lose the opener and then win the rest of the games. They'll have to in order to win another home series as they drop this series opener. Our instructional will feature Tom Kelly teaching you the basics of middle infield play. We'll hear from Ron Gardenhire and preview the rest of the series next on Twins Live.